How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here with the Mavic 3 and the Fly More Combo with the bag. We're out here in an empty parking lot. Uh, we're gonna do our first flight tutorial with the Mavic 3. And it's pretty important to find a nice open space like this. An alternative might be a grassy field or something, but then you might have to use a landing pad like this just so that you can take off and land without you know, hitting the grass with your propellers. If you need to brush up on how to um, unfold, turn on the drone, uh, you know, connect your remote control to your display device, any of that, refer to part one in this video series. For my display device, I'm using a Google Pixel 6 Pro. Shout out to Team Pixel. Also, thank you to this video's sponsor, Freewell, for supplying these neutral density and polarizer filters. We'll talk about more of those toward the end of the video. I'm gonna turn on the remote control. So it's going to be a short and then a long press. We'll make sure our phone gets turned on and we open up the DJI Fly app and let's go ahead and power on the drone as well. The drone is also a short and then long press on the battery. So now I'm going to go into the DJI Fly app. We're gonna go on the bottom right, go fly, tap that. And we have our image. Now, if we had any sort of compass warning, we would probably see it on the upper left. Now, we don't have a compass warning, which means we're probably OK, but we are going to calibrate the compass for the purpose of this tutorial. The compass calibration will just make sure that the drone knows which way it's pointed, north, south, east, west. GPS knows exactly where it is in space, but it doesn't know which way that the drone is pointed. That's where compass comes in. On the upper right, we're going to hit those three white dots, tap that. In the safety tab, we're going to scroll down to compass. It says compass is normal. That's good news, but let's calibrate it real quick. On the right, we're gonna tap calibrate for compass. And let's make sure that we're clear of metal or objects with electrical charge. When we hit start, we're gonna pick up the drone and rotate the aircraft 360 degrees horizontally. What I like to do is kind of orbit around the drone so the drone itself isn't moving through space per se. So I kind of do this. We're gonna do that 360 degrees. And then it says rotate aircraft 360 degrees vertically. And we're going to rotate again. 360 degrees, calibration successful. Starting out, you can see that I have the drone in front of me and the drone is facing the same way that I'm facing. That way, when I use my controls, left, my left is the drone's left and my right is the drone's right. If the drone was facing me when I take off, then my right is actually its left, and then it could get really disorienting. So make sure you always, always have proper orientation left to right with the drone when you first take off. I will individually spread apart each one of these propellers and make sure that they're good to go. Also, make sure you start out in normal mode and not in cine or sport mode. Make sure it's always gonna be normal to take off, and then you can go into the slower cine or the faster sport mode whenever you want to. On the upper right of the menu, click those three little dots and under the control tab, scroll all the way down and we have flight tutorial. Now you could just do this flight tutorial and not even watch the rest of this video if you want to, but let's go through. It says take off in an open, uncrowded area, turn your phone volume up to hear prompts and ensure the battery level of the aircraft and remote are at least 40% before flying. We've done that already. Start pre-flight check. All the propellers are in good working order. They're installed correctly. The gimbal cover is removed. The orientation is correct. And the remote controller check. So it says unfold remote controller antenna, but you don't really unfold it. You just pull out that bracket. And the bracket itself is the antenna of your remote control. Now it's gonna go through a bunch of different options here that we've already talked about on the bench. We're gonna hit next on most of this because we've already talked about it. It is good to tap this particular menu on the upper left to make sure that your pre-flight check is good. This is a way to see if there are any uh, warnings, any no-fly zones that you've encountered, um, maybe if the aircraft is sensing an IMU or a uh, compass calibration is in order, and just to make sure that your return to home altitude and, and max altitude and all that is, is good, and your storage location is also set. All right, it wants us to tap here to take off, so we're gonna do that. There, it says the aircraft will automatically take off to an altitude of 1.2 meters. Avoid taking off in confined spaces or crowds. Perfect. So we're gonna hold that takeoff button. All right, so for the basic operation, it wants us to ascend one meter with that left stick up.
Now we're going to descend. We're doing the exact opposite. So left stick down. Turn left, which we would call a yaw, so turning left. That would be left thumbstick to the left. And turn right. Finally, fly forward. And this is this point, you really want to make sure you know where you're going because we're going to be moving this drone through space. So, with the right thumbstick in mode two, press that up and the drone moves forward. Now the exact opposite, fly backward. Be careful with this one. Don't want to take your head off. Very good. Move left, so this is moving to the left and you don't want to sideswipe something to the left or the right, so make sure you know where it's going because if you're moving to the left, you're actually not seeing where you're going in the app. And right. And now wants us to land. So we're going to tap to open the return to home window. I'm gonna teach you how to return to home later because we're so close. What I'm gonna actually do is manually bring this back. So with the right thumbstick, we're going to move the drone back a little bit. And down with the left thumbstick. When you've lowered the aircraft enough to maybe within uh, maybe three or four feet or a meter, meter and a half of the ground, you can then tap that same button, which is now a landing icon. You tap that and then hold land and the drone will automatically land. Now that take off and land button, you can use that to take off and land. But what I like to do myself is to do more of the manual takeoff. So that is pressing down to the left with your left thumbstick and down to the right with your right thumbstick. That'll start the propeller spinning and you can make sure that everything looks good, the propellers sound good, they're not flying off, and then throttle up when you're ready. And then press down with our left thumbstick and keep pressing down. It's gonna pause, it's gonna make sure it's a good landing spot, keep pressing down and there we go. It's really your choice how you wanna take off and land, but for me, I like to do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take off. I'm gonna use my stick up method here. So this is gonna be, um, ooh, got a little breeze. You gotta be careful of the breeze when you're flying a drone too. Maybe not want to take off right when you get a big gust of wind blowing at your face like this. We're gonna do the stick takeoff maneuver. So we're gonna left stick down left, right stick down right, and then take off. Nice. You can hear that the app is saying some things to you, especially if your phone volume is up. Like it said that the home location has been recorded. So that's basically saying that right where it took off is now home. And if it were to lose signal or you, you hit the return to home button, it's gonna come back right here unless you adjust that home position. You'll also hear some dinging and that's the obstacle avoidance sensing me. It's actually going kind of crazy because I'm close enough to it that it's sensing me as an obstacle. And you can see on the bottom, you see those little indicators for the obstacle avoidance. They are showing that yes, that is me right there. It's sensing me as I walk behind the drone. That's the obstacle avoidance in action. Now, you can make it do different things and uh, you know, uh, act different ways, but for now, let's keep that obstacle avoidance on the default brake setting, where it breaks whenever it senses an object instead of trying to automatically go around it. I'm gonna move forward just a little bit and raise it up just to get it out there a little bit. So we see a couple different things on the screen that we didn't see before. First of all, we see our downward sensor is showing that it's sensing the ground at about eight, eight and a half feet. Uh, that makes sense because our telemetry on the lower left is showing that we're about eight, eight and a half, almost nine feet uh, uh, high above the ground. That's according to GPS. So your sensor is sensing things 
visually with the optical avoidance, but your height and distance telemetry is showing GPS. So GPS is saying we are 8.9 feet above the ground and our distance is 19.3 feet away from us. If we were to start moving forward, like I'm gonna do right now, you can see that our horizontal speed is three miles per hour. And if I start raising us up a little bit with my throttle on my left stick, we're going up at about 1.1 miles an hour. That's your telemetry of how fast you're going, how far away you are, how high you are, that type of thing. To the left of that is your GPS. If you were to tap that, you can open up a mini map of your GPS. You, you tap that again and you see more detail in that mini map. So you see on the lower left, we have our image. We can tip, tap back on that to see our live video feed. But this whole map here is now showing exactly where we're flying. You can see uh, the parking lot we're at. We can see H, which stands for home. And we see an icon if we pinch in a little bit. We see where the drone is. We see where we are. And if I were to turn my body, if you, if you do this, you can actually see that that little indicator for the remote control turns with it. So that's helpful because if the drone is really far away and I didn't know exactly where it is in space, I've kind of lost track of it in the sky, I can open up my mini map, turn my body to turn to face, uh, to make that little arrow face the drone. And then, oh, well, lo and behold, it's right there. Then I know exactly where I am in space. I can come back, I can fly safely. As we move the drone around a little more, you can see that its orientation also turns and it creates a history, a line history basically, of where it's flying or where it has flown. Um, and then that red straight arrow always leads back to home. So if you get lost or you're, you, know, you don't exactly know where you are and you want to come back, your battery's running low, turn the drone using your control sticks to point directly down that red line. And that red line, if you then press forward and move the drone back, that line will lead you right back to yourself. That's not an automatic feature. I still pilot it back to myself, but it came right back. If you were to return to home, it would also head back to that H, which is essentially right next to me because that's where we took off. You go just tap that, that live video feed on the lower left. It'll expand that live video feed. And then if you tap that little minimize button there, you can get rid of that map and get back to full live video view. Okay, so right now I'm still flying and all I see is trees. I don't actually see myself. What if I want to get a shot down below, look down with the camera? Well, that's where this little dial comes into play. Jog this back and forth. And that is how you control your gimbal tilt. Now I've already used 46% of this battery just with this flight tutorial alone. The way I know that is on the upper right we have our battery indicator. So we have 54% battery, 53 now, and we tap that and we can see a couple different things. 15 minutes left until it's going to initiate a return to home automatically. 17, well, almost 18 minutes until a forced landing due to critical battery and 21 minutes, 20 seconds until battery is completely depleted. You don't wanna get that low. You don't wanna get to critical battery. You don't wanna get this below 20, 25% really, unless there's a good reason for it. I always bring my drone back before it gets to, you know, 25%. I just don't push it with my, my drones. Just to the right of that, we see 20 minutes, 33 seconds. That's how much battery life is left of this particular battery. Then we have our remote control strength, our obstacle avoidance status, as well as 20 GPS satellites that we have connected. Now with the Mavic 3, there are obviously two cameras. So right now, with the four-thirds imaging sensor, but in order to go to our telephoto camera, we just press those binoculars. And now we're in explore mode. So if we were to turn the drone a little bit to get me a little bit more centered up and use that gimbal tilt to get everything exactly in the center, we can press that 1x and it goes to 2x. And then 4x. Let's center it up a little bit. 7x, <laughs> 14x, 28x. Let's tilt up a little bit. It's really cool that we can get 28x uh, zoom on this. And if we want to get out of that, well, first of all, go back to 1x by tapping that, and then get out of that by just pressing those 
uh, binoculars again. So yeah, 28X zoom on a drone is pretty amazing. Now I have to give credit to Brett Garamella on his channel for reminding me about this feature with the Mavic 3. If you hold the function button on the left side of your remote and at the same time turn that dial wheel that normally changes the gimbal pitch, you can zoom back and forth from 1x all the way to 28x. This little video excerpt is from his channel because I forgot to record this while I was at the parking lot. You can also see how the main four thirds camera zooms from one to four X and then jumps to the telephoto camera for the increased zoom up to 28 X. Thanks Brett for telling us all about that feature in your video. All right, we are 22 feet high. We're 90 feet away. And you can see that we're in video mode. If we want to go to photo mode, we'll press that little film strip on the, on the right, right above the shutter button. And we have our selection for photo versus video. Um, we can go back and forth, you know, really depends, whatever you want. And that circular button all the way to the right in the middle of the app turns from a shutter button in photo mode. If you go to video mode, it turns into a record button. So if I record by tapping that, it's now recording. And so this is going to be a 5.1K 30 frame per second video because that's what I have it set at. You don't always have to shoot in 5.1K. I mean, you can, but you don't have to. It takes up a lot of space on your computer and not everyone has a, even a 4K monitor to view it on. So it really depends if it's worth it to you or not. Right now, my battery is in the mid 30s percentage wise. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out my battery with a fresh one. So I will power off the aircraft by pressing once and then again and hold that power button. And once all the lights have turned off, we can then pinch the sides of the battery and it pops out. And we'll get a new one. Check the status, full, very good. And slip it right in. We also wanna make sure it clicks nicely. Make sure both of those sides are nicely in. And we're good to go. So let's go ahead and short and then long press. And we're back on. When I did that, I just kept my remote control on the entire time. Now let's talk about the flight modes real quick. In the center of your radio, you have the switch. The Cine, normal, and sport mode. In Cine mode, it's a very much slower and delicate movement of the drone. So as you fly with the drone in Cine mode, Everything's a little smoother and slower. And that's good for getting some of those really nice, beautiful cinematic shots you might be looking for. And so in Cine and normal mode, your obstacle avoidance is working to keep your drone safe as long as you have it turned on. You go to sport mode, however, and your obstacle avoidance is turned off. So even though you get your full 40 something mile per hour top speed on this drone, you also have no obstacle avoidance. So that means if you're, if you're heading toward a building or a tree going full tilt, you're gonna hit it if you don't stop or maneuver around manually with your own stick input. Sport mode is fun. It's also important to note that sport mode will drain your battery faster than normal mode. So if you're low on battery and you're trying to get back, you might be tempted to go into sport mode to get back quicker, but you might actually run out of battery sooner by doing that. Now to do tracking, it's actually really easy. You find a subject in your frame of your video and so here I am standing, and I'm gonna use my finger to drag and draw, essentially, a box around myself. So, there's a box, and now it has me, and it's got me. Different ways of tracking, and it'll kind of tell you what exactly each one is, but if we like use active track and hit go and record, and I just start walking over here, it's automatically following me. And then we stop and then come back this way. I'm not, I'm not controlling it. This is just it doing its thing. We're gonna hit stop. POI is pretty cool because it draws an orbit around you. So as you start walking, it's gonna start kind of making its way around. Obstacle avoidance is turned on, don't worry. So even though we have some of these light poles and stuff, it's gonna be okay. So that's POI, point of interest. We either stop using the icon here or we could hit the pause button that also serves as the return to home button. So let's go ahead and move the drone out. 
little bit further away. Uh, in the first video, I set my return to home to like 300 and something feet. Let's modify that for this, this exact um, this, uh, location we're at. We don't need to go above, I'd say 100 feet to clear any of these trees. So really, return to home altitude should be set according to where you're at and how high you think that drone would need to fly to come back to you in an, either an emergency or a manually initiated return to home. Next to your mode selection on the upper left of the app, you have your flight status area. And let's move our return to home to 180 feet. We'll tap out of that by pressing on the screen outside of the menu. And now we are about 50 feet up and 106 feet away. We're gonna initiate our return to home. So that's going to be this button. Now this is also your pause button. So if you are using some of those uh, automatic settings such as tracking or some of the master shots or whatever, you can hit that which serves as the pause button to stop it if you realize something's about to happen or you just wanna get out of that mode. But if we hold on to that, hold on to it, it initiated return to home and here it goes. It's going to automatically return to home. Now, because it's pretty close to me, it didn't have to shoot up. It kind of just retraced its flight path back, but here it comes. And let's see. There. Right about there. So earlier I mentioned Freewell Gears all day eight pack neutral density filters and polarizers for the Mavic 3. These are really cool ND and polarized filters for the Mavic 3. You not only have your full range of ND4, 8, 16, 32, 64, as well as your circular polarizer without ND. And then you also have ND1000 and 2000 for really low shutter speed photography with this drone. You know, shooting like a waterfall or city street or something. So even if you get the neutral density filters that come with the fly more combo, they're not polarized. And if you didn't get the fly more combo, well, you didn't get any neutral density filters at all. Neutral density filters allow you to darken the image of your camera without adjusting any sort of its coloration. That way you can have a wide open aperture along with a low shutter speed for some really natural looking video, as opposed to high shutter speed, which eliminates all the motion blur from your shot and doesn't look quite as good, at least in my opinion. Also having a very closed aperture in order to do that normally without a neutral density filter will make really bright highlights like say the sun or really bright reflections from the sun to have this starry look to them, which doesn't look so great. Opening up that aperture allows for a much better and more natural looking sun flare. To use one of the filters, when the drone is completely powered off, you take the camera and twist off the existing, just clear lens protector, and then fit the filter exactly how that clear protector was seated on the camera's face. You can then power on the drone and it starts up just fine, no issues with gimbal calibration. So thank you to Freewell Gear for always supplying nice filters for me and my videos. If you have any other questions about the Mavic 3 or how to fly it or how to get started, let me know. Also make sure that you check the video description for both links to purchase this if you haven't already. Also links to the DJI Care Refresh plan for peace of mind, as well as the Freewell Gear filters, a few other accessories I like to use, like some extended thumbsticks that make controllability a little bit better with the Mavic 3 in my opinion a nice neck lanyard for the remote control, the um, sunshade for my remote control, as well as landing pads and whatever else you might need. So thank you so much for watching everybody. And until next time, happy flying.